I'm explaining a film from 2017, Dave Made a Maze. Spoilers ahead. Enjoy the content. David a jobless 30-year-old devotes his days to constructing a cardboard labyrinth. He claims to be a talented artist but hasn't produced anything of value. In an interview David explains he built the maze to prove his capabilities and regrets the lives lost because of it. The scene then takes us back three days David's girlfriend Anna returns from a trip to discover an enormous cardboard structure in her living room when she calls for David he answers from within the structure. He welcomes her home proudly declaring he built the maze by himself. Hey! Oh. What the- Hey baby! Welcome home! What is this? I built a labyrinth. Have you been working on this all weekend? Uh, I'm lost. It's cardboard. I know, but it's much bigger on the inside. Anna leaves herself to wash but finds David still within the cardboard when she returns. He admits to working on the maze all weekend and lost his way bewildered. Anna points out that he can just knock down the cardboard to leave. David argues that it's considerably bigger inside and refuses to destroy his labor-intensive build. Anna is agitated and tries to enter, but David cautions her that it is too hazardous. She rattles the cardboard, causing stuff to tumble within, and David shouts for her to stop. Anna gives up and chooses to walk in, but David continues to impede her admission, worrying she would become lost. Anna asks David how long he's been in the maze, to which he responds three days. Concerned she suggests tearing it down but he stubbornly seeks an alternative with no other options. Anna calls David's friend Gordon for assistance. When Gordon arrives Anna fills him in but David insists no one enter until the maze is complete. He then describes the structure's beauty, explaining he built from the center out like a seashell. While Anna and Gordon discuss the predicament, they remark on David's tendency to leave projects unfinished and question how he's going to the bathroom in there. Overhearing David admit he hasn't eaten in three days. Worried Anna and Gordon attempt to lift the cardboard but the box suddenly begins violently shaking like there's a machine inside. Gordon calls their mutual friend Leonard for help but inadvertently invites more people including journalist Harry and his crew siblings Greg and Bryn Energetic Jane two Belgian tourists and a homeless man. David warns everyone against entering or damaging the maze due to its obstacles and traps. Frustrated Leonard leaves when David refuses assistance. Anna grows increasingly concerned and David apologizes for putting her in this situation. He expresses how much he misses her and despite her frustration she tells him that she misses him as well. Anna decides to enter the maze and rescue David. Thrilled Harry begins documenting everything for his film. Seeing that Anna is getting ready to enter, everybody save the homeless guy decide to accompany her. Once inside, they learn that Dave wasn't insane, the structure is significantly larger than it seems from the outside. Can we go in the maze now? Let's go! Let's go! Go, 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 go! It is bigger. Gordon has first-hand experience with the labyrinth when he accidentally cuts his finger and the cardboard floor absorbs his blood while Jane and her pals explore the maze autonomously. Harry and his team trail Annie and Gordon as they seek for Dave, but they quickly realize the labyrinth is more intricate than they expected. Trying to find their way, Harry comes upon a button with a warning not to click it. Ignoring the caution he pushes the button causing Gordon to be struck by a ball. The group then encounters a passageway leading to a musical chamber with walls adorned with keyboard designs. They find that they can enter the wall through the black keys which brings them to a pit filled with discarded paper overlooked by two origami birds perched on a balcony. Suddenly, one of the birds strikes, generating terror among the group as the room door closes. Annie hunts for an alternative exit and discovers a giant face sculpture on the wall. She helps the group escape via the sculpture's mouth. Annie is frightened by the experience and tries to understand that the origami creatures are alive. Harry tries to capture her response, but Jane interrupts eagerly, describing her love of exploring the maze, unfortunately, her exuberance is short-lived when she accidentally sets a trap, culminating in her beheading. Huge. The double! <laughs> okay, I think we're good. Oh. In a bizarre twist her body releases confetti in yarn instead of blood causing the group to flee in terror. The scene shifts to Greg and Bryn playing hide and seek in the maze where Greg accidentally sets off another trap crushing him between a wall and a spiked grate. Bryn discovers his lifeless body and is doused with an odd pink substance elsewhere. 
Annie expresses frustration about Dave's implementation of the traps. Gordon explains that without them, the maze would just be a network of convoluted tunnels Bryn, now terrified, joins them and informs them of what happened to Greg, taking them to the scene of his death. To their amazement, Greg's body is vanished, with a trail of blood and massive footprints trail away from the chamber Gordon surmises that the tracks belong to a man devouring half-bull, half-human beast dubbed the Minotaur fed up. Annie decides to make a breach in the cardboard wall to enable everyone escape. As she does wind begins to blow and loud noises emanate as if something is attempting to prevent her actions. She succeeds only to find another chamber on the other side sensing impending danger. The group hastily enters the new room but Bryn remains behind transfixed by something. Despite like their pleas, a colossal monster quickly snatches her up, ending her life. Fearful, the group flees and finally encounters Dave Annie leads them through a small door into a peculiar room furnished with a cardboard table and chair. Save for the moment, an argument ensues and everyone blames Dave for their situation. Dave tells them that he told them not to enter, but he still pledges to guide them out. He leads them through a secret door and down a pipe, where they convert into cardboard figurines that demand an explanation from Dave. He assures them all will be well once they return to the apartment however the monstrous creature reappears sending the group running for their lives. David guides the group out of the chamber and at last something positive transpires as they cross a passageway. They all revert to their normal forms. The Minotaur chases them, but David constructs a temporary barrier to dissuade him. Tensions rise once more as everyone wishes to flee the labyrinth, resulting in heated arguments. When the situation escalates, David intervenes. Instead of trying to defeat the maze, we've got to complete the maze. We're not just doing that because it rhymes. Well then how about instead of trying to diminish it, you guys help me finish it. Oh! Yes! Yes! He's back. Revealing that the only way out is to finish constructing the incomplete maze, however, Annie forbids him from proceeding and instead commands him to lead them out reluctantly. David complies, and as they search for an exit, they come across an unfamiliar wall. Oddly David does not remember constructing it. Meanwhile, Leonard arrives home and enters the maze where he discovers the Minotaur's axe and Jane's decapitated head. As he departs a colossal origami insect attaches itself to his back. Elsewhere David leads Annie and the others to the entertainment room, then escorts them to another strange chamber containing a mesmerizing gap in the wall. The opening has a hypnotic effect drawing Annie and the others toward it, but David warns them to keep their distance. When they disregard his warning, he unveils his hand, now transformed into cardboard from touching the opening, and the group proceeds only to find the maze expanding on its own overcome by the bizarre events. David pleads for help in defeating the giant so he can complete the maze and return home. Regrettably the group rejects the idea in the midst of the chaos. Harry proposes interviewing David for a documentary to which he agrees. During the interview David confesses his self-loathing for being a jobless 30-year-old reliant on his parents. He made the maze to prove his powers to them and others, and he apologizes for the deaths within the labyrinth affected by his fragility, and he promises to assist him escape. Reinvigorated, the party strategizes their escape. Gordon believes that the live, developing maze must have a heart that they can find and destroy. David believes that everything has a weak spot, but he did not construct one for the maze due to fear of destruction. Gordon responds that not finishing the maze means never failing. Annie empathizes with David, emphasizing that everyone experiences failure, which is a natural part of life. She then encourages him to create the chrysalis so they can destroy it and escape. The group resumes exploring the maze encountering Bryn who was previously killed and is now a paper figure affixed to the wall. Despite her request for high fives, they decline, suspecting a trap. David and Annie continue searching for their objective while Gordon and the others stay behind. David and Annie eventually discover a dim tunnel leading to the maze's core, where they construct the heart of the maze. After its completion, Annie hacks through the cardboard with a sword. Sensing this, the group restrains Bryn to protect Annie, but Bryn morphs into a massive hand and vanishes, dragging the cameraman. The remaining members rejoin David and Annie at the core. On the way Gordon becomes separated when the Minotaur starts to chase him. As David and Annie assemble the heart Harry and his crew document the event. The Minotaur relentlessly chases Gordon as the heart becomes alive, and he sees Leonard perish through cardboard blades at the Mesa Center. David smashes the heart with his sword, causing the entire edifice to collapse. No!
The group safely escapes the wreckage, but David is devastated by the loss of his creation. Harry consoles him by reminding him of the documentary. They clean up the debris and dispose of it outside. As they leave, the Minotaur and an origami bird emerge, seeking vengeance on humanity. Thanks for watching. Your support would be appreciated. I hope to see you next time.